Hi, friends. Welcome to today's episode, Emotional Damage. I was so excited for Teffy to be here that I explained her the theme as soon as I saw her. I was just so pumped for it and forgot to introduce it on the episode and forgot to introduce us even until the very end. So things are a little patched in. So you'll be hearing the song quicker than usual, but theme today is emotional damage. Just crazy Reddit stories that most of which came from you guys sending me and are crazy. Like if you think of the song on TikTok, emotional damage, emotional damage. That is literally these stories. Also, just an FYI to everyone that wants to send me links for Reddit stories going forward. I would love for you guys to post them on the THT subreddit. A little easier for me to find and sort through. But that's it. Enjoy the episode. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. I'm your host Morgan and today I'm joined by the lovely, amazing Teffy. Oh my god, hi. If you're watching this now, it's not Angelina Jolie, it's me, it's Teffy. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm an awkward laugher. I love it, I love it. Okay. Let's start. Let's go. Um, yeah, I definitely know you're on board for the Jewishness because I just watched one of your TikToks about you giving relationship advice and you were like, sweetie, don't sweat it. There's other men out there that will spin you around like a dreidel. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made you out of clay. And when you're dry and ready, then dreidel, I will play. Exactly. I My first school, nursery school ever was next door to my mom's uh, where she worked and it was Beth David. Okay. <laughs> and my mom was like, everybody here is chill. She loves Jesus. We can we can talk to her about Jesus at a later date. But right now we love Miss Fanny. That was her name. Mm -hmm. I love Miss Fanny. Um, and my mom said that she had to take me out because every Saturday I'd wake her up and be like, Shabbat today, mommy. Oh. And she was like, no, dude, we love Jesus. And I'm like, so do we, but he's not that big of a deal. And she's like, okay, we got to get her out of there. Yeah, you can be, uh, we're kind of a mix of both here. My mm -hmm. mom likes the likes the Jesus. best of both worlds yeah mm -hmm. so we we get lots of presents come holiday season uh, when people talk about jewish guilt i'm like oh it's kind of like latin roman catholic guilt you know yeah. together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're like this yeah we go exactly. way back i know so you are kind of one you're celebrity expert on tiktok mm. <laughs> You are. Yes, you so. give these little scandal breakdowns. I do. And I'm like, I, I do. watched the Tiger Wood one recently. That's my favorite one. I was thinking about it today in the shower. I was like, if you had to pick one series that you did, which one would it be? And it would be Tiger Woods. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I saw that one. And I was like, I think you said 140 different women. 126. Damn. 126 <sighs> different Look women. Look at you. Mm -hmm. No condom. He told each and every one that they were the only one that was okay. They didn't I have to wrap part. it up. What the? Fuck. That's fu dude, Tiger. That alone, straight to crazy. jail. Crazy, straight to jail. That's a felony. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely. a petri dish. It's yes, mm, absolutely mm, too much. And Rapid. then going home to his poor little wife. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but you know yeah, whatever. He deserved With that the, golf club. I mean, true. That's what I was. Gonna, I'm like, no one deserves to get hit, but he definitely deserved to get scared, and scared he was <sighs> to play possum like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would do the same thing whenever I'd be in trouble. Like I'd hear my mom pick up the phone and it'd be like Mr. Trujillo, like my earth space science. Yeah. It was actually Mr. Garcia, Mr. Okay. Garcia in uh, GW Carver. He'd call and he'd be like, she's failing. And she'd be like, I find that so interesting, Mr. Garcia. And I'd go into my bed. It'd be like 5 p.m. I go, I guess. <laughs> just knock the fuck out. So I get it, Tiger. I need to try that more for conflict resolution. Just possum. How old are you? 27. It doesn't oh, work no, anymore. I'm, I'm 28. Oh, okay. I forget all the time. Well, maybe it worked. <laughs> I forget all the time. Someone asked me how old I was once and I was like 24 and I was like, wait, no, no, no. I'm, I'm 27. My mom and I talk about this all the time. There's uh, a soul age. Like my mom says she's a exhausted 35. Okay. I'm, I feel like I'm 22. I could see that for you. I'm like, mm -hmm. what do you mean I have to pay for my own health insurance? That was the saddest Yo. day of my life. Yo, I look at people and, they're, and people who are like 24, 25, and they talk to me like they know everything. I'm like, okay, fine. How do you sign up for health insurance? And when you have it, how do you find your dental insurance? They're separate. Why are they know. separate? Your teeth are in your fucking head. I can't find it. That's why I won't go to the dentist. Oh, so, yeah. I know. We got to go. I got a really good guy. We should just two birds, one stone. He's Can, a good guy. Yeah. His name's Matt. Dr. You Matt. can't find a good dentist. A lot of them are. <laughs> I got scammed once. This bitch told me I needed four crowns. 
I only needed one. <laughs> Just one. Wait, she, and you got four crowns. You got four crowns in. No, I only did one because I went to Dr. Matt. You got a second opinion. And Matt was like, that dude is. Dr. Matt, first name? Mm-hmm. Okay. He's a cutie. Okay. He's cute. Yeah, he's a good Okay, one. cool, 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 cool. Yeah, cool. you'll like him. All right, all right. Yeah, you'll like him. Yeah, he's Dead. good. He's good. I love it. Um, So between your celebrity mm-hmm. expertise, which mm-hmm. we're going to talk about celebrity beefs a little at the end. Okay. But you also give really good relationship advice. Yeah, I've been th- I've been through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think um I think for relationship advice, I like to think about it as like fifteen year old me. I didn't I didn't have anybody to really talk about it with. Mm-hmm. I guess like my mom. My mom's not a regular mom. She's a cool mom, but she's still my mom. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like we have more of a friendship now, but at the time she's very much like, I'm your fucking mom. Oh yeah. And I didn't want, and I had like a lot going on too. Like I changed schools at 15. So every time I think about like relationship advice, I think of like that stage in my life and like what I needed to hear, you know? So I, I'm trying to do that for people who are younger than me. Cause I feel like there are, there are a lot of lessons that I've learned through relationships but I really didn't need to learn them. No. Like I would have been the same bitch. It was way harder than it needed to be. Absolutely. And I made it harder. And my mom has a saying all the time, like when the universe wants to teach you a lesson, the second time you have to learn that lesson, it's harder. The third time it's even harder. The fourth time. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta say uncle, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And I think for women, um, especially it's like you are measured, um, and weighed, according to your generosity and your loyalty. Mm-hmm. And for men, it's like- The opposite. It completely, <laughs> your productivity, your leadership skills, like all of that. But for women, it's like this idea of like ride or die. Why are we dying in this scenario? I can ride with you, but I'm very much somebody that's gonna say, he's right there, your honor, that's me. I'm not sticking by you, absolutely yeah. not. You no. know what I mean? No. So I want to tell women like, you're not a bad partner for um, for choosing like peace in your life. Yeah, your own sanity, your own health, mental health. One of my friend's dads told me, listen, you are, cause I was having problems in a relationship and he was like, and I was like, I want advice from you. No, 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 no. He's like, I'm gonna stop you right there. You are both healthy. You don't have any real financial issues. Your families are healthy. Um, you don't have kids. This should be the easiest time in your life. And in fact, like the fights should be about like how you miss each other. You can't see each other, schedules, coordinating things. But this should be like the easiest time. Mm-hmm. And that for me was such a thing where I'm like, why am I acting like I've been with somebody for 50 years off the rip, up, like off rip? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why am I like hopelessly devoted to you? Grace, anybody? Losers. Uh, Sandy, yeah. Thank you. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's our brains though, just messing us up. And like we get... Our brain's a muscle. We get stuck on these toxic loops and our brains like just secrete these hormones that make us feel like we need those toxic loops. Well, your brain is constantly trying to figure out how to make you happy all Mm -hmm. the time, like patterns, Mm -hmm. right? It's trying to figure out patterns to keep you happy. And, um, and it like, for example, like, um, social media, like social media, Oh, your brain knows dopamine. that your brain knows oh, yeah. that that makes you happy when seeing likes and stuff. So your brain's like, okay, let's keep her on this, yeah. you know. So with relationships, that cycle of like that high of like when you think someone's gonna break up with you or it's so toxic, and oh my god, I really want to be with this person, and then you know, like it works out. That high, your brain records it. Mm-hmm. Your brain doesn't know. That's why I say too, like to talk about your body or like to talk about um, what you think about yourself, like self-deprecating humor sometimes like your brain doesn't know when you're joking mm-hmm. so sometimes it'll be like fuck I'm so fucking stupid and then immediately I'm like I'm just kidding I know that I'm smart because you got to talk <laughs> to the little men in black alien in yeah. your brain you know when they open the door and he's like <sighs> like that that's what I picture mm-hmm. oh my god as long as it doesn't involve that little pug Frank I don't like the pug <laughs> Frank the pug pugs scare hey, me sweet yeah. I love Frank pugs scare the shit out of me really they just they that's they were bred to be scary yeah I saw yeah. I saw like a, a picture of their skulls once and it was it was over after that yeah it's like someone someone went it's bad 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 news bears well based on this mm-hmm. I think you're gonna give these people great decisions okay. on if they're the asshole or not oh this is my favorite corner I have another favorite corner of Reddit too what is it I'm not proud of it. Dead bedrooms. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> no. People that haven't had sex for a while and they're like talking about how to like seduce their partner again. Go into my email. Sign up for the Reddit notifications. <laughs> I have two. I have one that's about the um, glitches in the matrix. Oh, that. Dude. 
that, that I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the moment I can submit. But that's crazy. When people, oh. dude, I'm holding in a burp so bad. You just let them out, and that we'll cut. We'll cut them. Don't cut them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Why'd you burp? Okay, so. Sorry, bro. So the uh, glitches in the matrix. So this one guy, it's a video. It's a freaking video. And this bird, he's recording like this, like it's like an Uber driver. Yeah. You know how they record the backseat and yeah. the front in case of like uh, accidents. It's recording and you see the bird poop on the windshield. And then he's like, what the fuck? And he touches it and it smears in the inside. That's a glitch. What? And another guy that was like, I, um, I know my coworker quit. And it wasn't a dream. And I woke up the next day and it was the same day, but she stayed. What the hell? And it's like split up. And then the other side is, I don't know why they're so mean to her. I get kind of an idea, but Jesse James Decker, that side of Reddit, you see it? I've heard she's a pill of a person. People say she is a real see you next Tuesday. Oh, yeah. And sometimes, I, but I read it and people go the fuck. They hate her. It, they I'm hate from, her. I'm from Minnesota. So her husband played- Eric Decker. Football at mm -hmm. the University of Minnesota. And so I had a friend that was friends with his family and his family hates her. They all hate they her. They went to Minnesota recently and did not see Eric's family. No, they hate her. I'm So I'm in that. I'm reading it. A lot of it is crazy though. A lot of it is so sexist. Uh, yeah. Like a lot, like a, it's a selfie and it's like, God, who takes as many selfies of themselves? And I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> or like her boobs look Over rock here. hard. I'm like, leave her boobs alone. They Everyone do, they, wishes they had like, rock hard boobs. Like, yeah. That's what I'm trying she to get. She had three kids, four kids. She has a that's bunch impressive. of kids. Yeah. I'm sure, I think she did breastfeed, so that's impressive. Let her have hard boobies. What's in your <sighs> that's business? A that's a flex. It's one thing to talk about how somebody's breaking up a family and how her singing, <laughs> like a lot. It's a I lot. Need to, I need to subscribe okay. to this subreddit. But are you the asshole is like my favorite thing in the world. Okay, okay. I'm ready. Put Take me to the place. My eyes are closed. Let's go. Let's dive in. Okay, I'm diving. Up first, mm -hmm. am I the asshole for eating at the same restaurant as my husband's family? <laughs> I, 32 female, have been married to my husband, 35 male, for three years. We dated for two years before that. I want to start this off by saying that he is a really good guy in other areas. My husband's parents hit two, his two brothers, ages 38 and 40-ish, and his brother's girlfriends have a tradition of going out to dinner once a month. I am invited about 50% of the time. I've talked to my husband's brother's girlfriends and she says she is invited every time. Mm. When I say I'm not invited, I mean that my husband tells me, quote, I'm going to the family dinner. It's probably best if you sit this one out. When I expressed that I wanted to come, he told me that it would be best if I didn't. It has caused several fights. About a week ago, my husband went to a family dinner that I wasn't invited to. I was very pissed. So earlier that day, I called and made a reservation at the same restaurant they were going to. I got to say. I got to say. Genius. I mean, Gabby and I would be in there in a minute. Shannon's outside honking the horn. Beep, beep. I'm parking. I've like, done something like this, actually. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. My husband left the house not knowing about my reservations, and I left 15 minutes after him. I ended up seated at a table where I couldn't see his family, so I got up as if I was going to the bathroom and walked right past them. They were all there, including his brother's significant others. My husband looked completely shocked and asked me what I was doing there. I told him that I'd just been dying for a steak, so I came and got one at the restaurant. My mother-in-law said it was very rude of me to interrupt <laughs> their family dinner. I mm -hmm. pointed out that I wasn't trying to join them. I was just going to the bathroom. I told them to have a good meal, and I left. I went and finished my steak by myself. My husband was really pissed when he came home. Oh, he was? He told me that he couldn't believe how much of an asshole I had been. Oh, my goodness. I said that he was an asshole for not inviting me to his dinners when his brother's significant others got to go. My husband said that the decision to invite was between him and his family, and I should respect it. Is he going to be okay? Anyways, with the way the word asshole was thrown around, it made me think of this sub. So I wanted to ask if I am the asshole. So first of I? all, I'm going to say one thing. The name calling, your husband is calling you an asshole a little too freely for my fucking taste. Second of all. Very nonchalant. You married her. This is, this is not your family when it's convenient to you. You married her. Okay. So he needs to look at his family and be like, 
if I don't, if my wife doesn't come, I'm not going to come. How is he so comfortable sitting in a restaurant talking to his brother's girlfriend than the woman he sleeps next to at night? I'm going to tell you something else. My grandfather used to say, if you really want to get to know a man, you see how he treats the person they sleep next to every night. So how come he's treating her like a business partner and a, and a coworker and a roommate? But when it's time to have family time, you don't want your family to know your wife. How long do you want to be married to me? Is there like a time limit? Do you <laughs> do you clock in and clock out? Absolutely fucking not. Yeah, he's got a punch card, it seems. Absolutely. When are we going to dinner, babe? Mm -hmm. And I would look at the mom and be like, I know this is your son, but this is not your boyfriend. And I'm sorry. That's on enmeshment. A lot of women, especially in my community, are raising men to be their perfect boyfriends because something is missing in their lives. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Then you should have sat up and be like, I have checked. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. We eat dinner together. And when you have family, if, if it's a fa the girlfriends are there. Why? Are you out of your freaking mind, dude? Why are they more family than the wife? Because they like them. Exactly. Because they like, the, it's, I mean, okay, babe, the family doesn't like you. <laughs> That's their fucking problem. Time You're to... not going anywhere. If you don't want me to go to dinner, Ugh. either like, or like, or, or divorce me. <laughs> divorce me. That's where I'm at. Like, I'm like, what's the fucking point? We're going. I'm getting in the car. What's the point? Or next time, every time I go to dinner and you don't invite me, I'm getting a steak closer and closer to the table. Closer and closer to the table. I would have asked to be seated right across from them. So the mom just has to stare at you the whole time. Uh, it's like, but I look at it too. I'm like... What did, what I want her to ask her mom cuz my mom <laughs> my mom would not stand for this. My mom would be sitting there with me. My mom would would swim from Miami to New York with a knife in her mouth like like this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Laura Croft style. You're going to leave me out? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You married me. I'm your fucking family. These little girlfriends, they might break up next week. We had a we ha we have a contractual obligation to one another mm -hmm. that we're eating dinner together. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I get maybe you don't want to go. So every once in a while, it's fine. But it's like 50% of the time and it's not up to her. It's like, you better sit this one out, sweetie. It's like, no, <sighs> I mean, I can understand too. Maybe she did that for, she did that for the drama. Yeah. I mean, but it gets to the point too, like you ask and you ask and you ask. And I'm going to tell you, I would think, is he taking some other bitch to dinner? That, that was my first thought. I was thinking like, there's going to be cool a side, cheating? A side yeah. check at the table. You have to find out like, and then I would ask the family, I'd stand up, I'd get my little fork in my glass. Why don't you people fucking like me? I'm very nice. Yeah. I'm very nice. And if you didn't like me, why'd you let me marry him? Why do you guys come over for holidays? Why do you spend holidays together? But family dinner? Bullshit. Bullshit. You are not the asshole. Your family is a bunch of assholes. How old is she? 32? She is 32. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's over. Bye. Absolutely yeah. fucking not. Done. No, you don't want to feel like an outsider your whole life. So top comment, what the fuck? Your husband and his family are assholes. Yeah. Next one. Literally the only words I could think of, what the fuck? Not the asshole at all. The next comment is where- Things get spicy. Things get a little dicey. So they go, not the asshole, OP, but your in-laws and husband are racist. OP stated- in this comment that she is mixed race. And then when she asks her husband why his family does not like her, he is cagey and never gives a real response. The other significant others are all white like the in-laws, which is why they get invited every time. The only difference between any of them, including religion, is that OP is mixed race. The fact that her husband is okay with this and then gets angry at OP for asking about it says he too is racist and fine with racist excluding his wife. Absolutely. Where did I, that was like a total 180. Did not see that coming. How are you going to go to dinner with your family knowing that your wife is home eating alone? Despicable. Despicable. Mm -hmm. I, left to wonder what's wrong with me. That's what's cruel. The, see so the problem, people talk about communication. Yes, it's so healthy, but to not do that is cruel. You made this woman think about what is wrong with her. Why wouldn't they like me? Yeah. And it's something completely out of her control. And you married her. That's the thing here. Why marry her? If you knew there was going to be this conflict your entire marriage, and if you knew you weren't willing to stand up for her, why marry her? Why put someone through this? When you marry How someone- How do we find out who the fuck this is? I'm driving. What's his address? What literally dropped the pin? I'm taking her out. We're finding her a new man. You I know like what? This. John, you can hook up with this girl. <laughs> she needs a little boost. 
Literally. Absolutely uh, not. Absolutely not. So bad. She needs it. She, yeah. I, need, I You know what? I want to see what he looks like. I want to see what he looks like. You already know. Yeah, no, there's no update. OP comments a lot. She's half black. They are all white. They don't openly Where act racist towards me. Oh, okay. Oh. But I'm sure there's, I can't imagine there's another reason. If Where she, the fuck are they going to so eat? Nice. She should go with her friends. Oh, yeah. You know what? Get the gang together. Girl, come to Miami. Take her out. Girl, come to Miami. I'm, I'm inviting myself. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Let's together, you and I, make this man cry. Yeah. Loser. Let's, let's do it. Asshole. Mm -hmm. Asshole. Moving, moving along. Divorce. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we got to jump straight to it. Let's go. Give him the D. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck Take this. him for all he's worth and then buy the restaurant that they have dinner at. It's probably fucking all what? a burden. It's, I'm telling you. For Texas Roadhouse. I can, well, when you're there, you're family. I can see him saying it. Bob is so fucking dumb. I never liked him. Dumbass. When you're there, you're family. You know it. <laughs> oh, apparently fucking not. <laughs> not me, bitch. I'm hot. I'm hot. The next one might, might increase it. It might increase it. Uh, I might have to do a trigger warning on this one because that triggered my gag reflex earlier. Uh huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Close my eyes. I'm closing my eyes. I'm there. Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend not to spit in our food? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Mm hmm. We're currently not speaking because of this issue. Mm -hmm. Since I find it gross and my boyfriend can't see my problem with it. Mm -hmm. I do most of the cooking in our relationship, which I'm fine with. Okay. However, occasionally my boyfriend will want to do some cooking together slash do some baking. Nice. We do a lot of activities together, especially now we're both home a lot more. Mm. The one thing I cannot stand is a habit he has when it comes to food. If my boyfriend thinks something is too dry or needs a better consistency, he will use his own spit and put it in the food. For example, the other day we were icing homemade cookies, and I caught him, quote, thinning out the icing mixture by spitting inside the bowl and mixing it in. Free me. <laughs> this has been an issue for some time, so he tries to hide it whenever he does it from me. But every time I catch him- He tries to hide it so he knows it's wrong. Okay, keep going. Every time I catch him and I just find it gross, his reply is to shrug and tell me that I get more of his saliva in my mouth when we kiss anyways. <laughs> so it shouldn't be a big deal and makes literally no difference. I've pleaded with him to use water, but he says the texture isn't the same and has pointed out that, quote, if I can't tell the texture is different, surely it doesn't matter that it's not water anyways. I know that in a way he's right, and it's not like I complain about his spit when we make out, but something about it being mixed in with food just grosses me out. Am I the asshole for not wanting my boyfriend to spit in our food when we cook together? Are you in your body when you type this? Are you in your body? How gaslit has she been? Like to believe that the spit, like she's, she's almost borderline like. The fact that he hides it. The fact that he hides it. And it's, it's, the, it's, not the, it's the same when I, when I <sighs> kiss you. No, the fuck it's not. No, the fuck it's not. That's absolutely not true. <laughs> we have the same amount of saliva. Are you joking? Have you seen the Titanic? That's what he's doing to your food. <laughs> he's doing that to your food. Uh, it's different. Honestly, I would, you know what, what I would do? What I would do if I, were, if I was in her position? Spit on it. On this episode of Snapped. 1,000%. 1,000%. Imagine I call my manager and I say, hey, my boyfriend's doing something weird. She would be like, stay right where you are. I'm coming. And so are the authorities. Yeah. Get out of here. You're spitting in my food. This You're spitting weird. in my food. This is so weird. For the consistency. You're not a baby bird. Get out of here. The baby bird argument is valid. The baby bird. Go buy yourself a compote. How do you say like, a freaking Gerber? Like go mushy gushy. A sippy cup? A sippy, not even a sippy cup. What is it? What's it called? Baby like food? A baby, baby food. Like yeah. mush the baby food or whatever. Go. I sound like Ilaria. <laughs> <laughs> Cucumber. No. <laughs> um, her and her fake accent. For real. And when I was living in Spain, it, okay. Uh, with my business. Uh, no, uh, truly, I'm like, maybe it's a, I think it's a kink of his. I could see that. It's not about consistency, babe. It's no. about, it's a kink. He likes watching you eat his spit. Yeah. 
And you know what's coming up next? Oh, I wonder if it's like a dominating thing. Absolutely. Yeah. This is psychology, but also mm-hmm. two things. One, how did that kink come to be? And mm-hmm. two, kinks are hereditary. Are they really? Yeah, it ruined my fucking day. Oh, yeah. But you, what you're saying... In, in the no, boudoir? No, what? Mm-hmm, they're hereditary. Oh my God, I just had a story last week about a guy that has a urination kink. Well? And he likes to pee in public. Well, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm scarred. I'm thinking about what my boyfriend's into now. I'm thinking about I'm what like, I'm into. And I oh, call my mom, oh, good God. morning, mummy. <laughs> like, Are no, you into no. this too? Absolutely. Like, but I'm thinking, it's because he likes watching her. I, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I would not be surprised if he's spitting in her face cream, her face wash, her shampoo. Oh, he loves the idea that she's covered in it. I would have to get all my stuff DNA tested. I would, ha- I would have to know. Thousand percent. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Bill. This is about cheating too, but I use it with everything. The first time you keep burping. Me? <laughs> You keep it to me. Oh, I'm like, what? I am? <laughs> I didn't notice. It's probably, I am. I'm a gassy imagine person that, sometimes. Imagine I from you. Yo, you keep burping. I'm like, what? I'm going to, the first time you catch them doing it is not the first time that they've done it. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. How many times before when you didn't I know? I promise you, if she were to ask any ex or his mom, he's been oh, spitting in God. people's food for a long time. I think this gets worse for me too. If I find out the way he's been spitting is what I'm envisioning. I'm, it's the, yeah, it's the gummy. I'm in, it's the gummy stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm envisioning the like, and you hawk it from the back of your throat. And I just recently, not recently, like a year ago. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know. Do you know what tonsil stones are? Yeah. So I just found. I know what they are because my brother has to be going to make me fucking throw up. He made me, no. He made me, he made me Do we need to get them. a new bucket? <laughs> Get you a bowl? Oh a my, he bowl? made me smell it. Oh my god, okay, we'll move on. But I, I'm envisioning I know. I'm envisioning it's coming from the throat and you might get one of those in your baking mix. Oh god. Okay, yeah. The, uh, it's, it's something with like bugs and like um body fluid. Like I can't take blood either, like anything like okay. that. I can't take a, the the thought, the thought, I would I would be in jail. Yeah. I would be in jail. Uh thank God. I had Drew on a couple months oh, ago. That's my baby. And um, I gave her a story about a guy who was putting slugs in his girlfriend's food. What the fuck is wrong with these people? We are failing them as a society. And you know what? I'm going to say something. Bullying sometimes works. If you see a kid fucking eating (laughs) slugs, you got to call him a fucking loser because he might put in his girlfriend's food one day. Like, oh, well, let's just leave him be. Absolutely not. Do not let Bob be. And what happens? I mean, I'm using all these well, assholes he, called Bob. No, he literally could have killed her. She had like, she developed a heart condition. What the actual fuck? We yeah. got to bully people more. We got- <sighs> Between this and um, with the kink one I had recently, people were like, sometimes it's okay to kink shame. Like we need, sometimes it's okay. Absolutely. But also with the slugs and stuff, I need her to look up his browser history. Oh yeah. What porn is he watching? Mm. That is gross. I'm curious what there is for spit content now. Spit content? I'm just kidding. Don't. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> After. Like, Teffy look, actually, this later. is my story. And I'm I'll done. Look later. <laughs> um, yeah. So actually, mm-hmm. this is Justin, my boyfriend. He's doing this. J name. It makes sense. I mean. J name. Yeah. J name. Those J names. You got to watch out. What can you do? What's his sign? Justin is a Leo. So is he. But he's like a cusper. He's August 20th. So he's. He's August 20th. Oh my God. What are you? I'm July 22nd. I'm a Cancer, but I'm the last day of Cancer. Okay. And I'm a Leo Moon. I'm a fucking Leo. I'm, I'm a, a Leo Mercury. You're a Pisces? Yeah, I'm a little Shelter. fish. I'm a little fish. Emotional fish. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Moon rising? I got some uh, I got some Scorpio somewhere in there, I think. I'll pull up my co-star. It's going to be okay. Yeah. It's, mm. it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so top comment on this one. Uh-huh, go. I, uh, I mean... I don't think not the asshole is adequate to express the absolute <laughs> horror I'm feeling on your behalf right now. I wish I could upload a selfie so you could see the degree of not the assholeness I feel written all over my fo- my face. Your boyfriend is disgusting. disgusting. Yeah. Body body fluid? I'm going to tell you like peeing and stuff. I'm just like, I, I don't understand the idea of wanting somebody slimed by you. You know what I mean? Pee, Bad. the other stuff, spit. The, the corners of the internet are disgusting. Yeah. 
You need some, I think some, I think men in general need like parental controls run by women. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like every year men have to take a test to see whether or not they are able to connect to Wi-Fi. You should not be able, every man should not have Wi-Fi. <laughs> we should cut them off. And oh once they God. pass that test, we have to monitor their parental controls. Yeah. I think there's, especially, I mean, the guy podcast that you see on the internet. I'm oh, just, dude. There, I needs an, like, there needs to be an IQ test to own a bike. Like truly, and yeah. women, some, I feel like men see women as uh, two people. Either I want to fuck you or I don't. And if I don't want to fuck you, you don't matter. And you're annoying and you're taking up space for the women that I do want to fuck. But if I want to fuck them, they don't want to fuck me on the other side. But if I want children with you, if I want children's, if I want kids with you and you're not exactly like my mommy, who was mean to me. Mama's boys scare me. Dude. They scare me. Oh my God. It's too much. It is a lot. And I look at them and I'm just like. Your son is spitting in people's food. <laughs> like, fuck <laughs> off. My baby boy. Yeah. He, I wonder, I wonder what the fuck he saw growing up that he sees that as like. Okay. Acceptable behavior. And like, almost like love. Like yeah. he's baking. <gasps> I don't know where his brain is. It's definitely in the gutter, but my first thought would never, ever be. Like water. The consistency? I was going to say, <sighs> they ran out of freaking olive spit, oil? Spit doesn't have a great consistency. It's like egg white. It's sticky and weird and gross. And why would you use spit when we have egg white, babe? That you should use in baking and cooking. Oh my God. She it's needs in to the leave. recipe most but also, of the time. I think about her and I'm like, why are you? Why are you still with him then? Mm -hmm. Like, I promise you, it can get, it gets better. I don't think some people realize that. I really don't. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Go build something. Uh, oh my God. This next one mm -hmm. might, it's a little more tame. Okay, hit me. It's a little more tame. It's more of the traditional drama. Okay, we okay, deal okay, with. okay, okay, okay. Who is she? <laughs> Go. Best friend of 12 years chose her boyfriend over me, and now she is begging for forgiveness. Oh, well. My ex best friend, 21 female, and I, 22 female, have known each other for 12 years. We were literally each other's ride and dies. We were there for every important moment in each other's lives. I consider her a sister that I never had. In January 2021, my best friend got into a relationship with a guy. She seemed happy, and she told me that he was the best guy she'd ever been with. Mm -hmm. When I met him... Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> she said 21, and I was like, whoop! Surprise! I uh, mm -hmm. haven't been with a lot. You don't know yet. Mm -hmm. When I met him, he was cool, and he seemed nice. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to May 2021. One night, I was out with some other friends, and we went to the spot that we would usually hang out at. My best friend wasn't with us because she was working that night. I ended up running into her boyfriend and his friends. My friend group and his friend group ended up chilling together and everything was cool. I had only one drink that night because I had to get up early the next morning. However, everyone else had a couple drinks in them. I ended up leaving early and told them that the Uber I had ordered was on its way. My best friend's boyfriend offered to walk with me because he also had to go out to smoke. We ended up outside and I proceed to also have a quick smoke before my ride arrives. We started talking about trivial stuff and then about my best friend. I told him that it sucked that she wasn't able to come out tonight. At first, he agreed with me, but then he said, quote, yeah, but if she was here, we wouldn't be talking right now, which rubbed me the wrong way. Oh, not, not shit talking your girlfriend. I was, okay. I was looking at my phone to see where the Uber was and pretended that I didn't hear what he said. He repeated what he said and went on to add that if he wasn't with my friend, he'd be pursuing me. I ended up snapping at him and told him that what he was doing was fucked up. My Uber was pulling up, so I told him to get lost and got inside the car. I ended up texting my friend on my way home and told her that I needed to speak to her urgently and that she should call me when she gets off in the morning. I didn't tell her what it was about because I felt like this type of information needs to be told face to face or at least be heard. She's very mature. I would have been like, check your Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> I recorded the whole shit. You have to these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the next morning came, she had not called me, but she had seen the text message because the red receipts were on. I called her and the minute that she picked up, I could tell she was pissed. I asked her how she was doing 
and she was being very short with me. Oh, was she? After a few- Sounds like PR to me. Sounds like somebody did PR before you. Damage uh-huh, control. Uh-huh. A little spin. Okay. After a few awkward moments, I told her that I needed to tell her about something that happened the night before. And she said, quote, I know. This is why you don't wait. Got to just- Twitter fingers, just get it out there. Yo, your boyfriend, you know what? Most of my friends too, I'm going to, you know what? Continue and then I'll, and then I'll say my piece. Turns out that her boyfriend had texted her the night before that I had tried to flirt with him. According to him, I was trying to take advantage of him being drunk to flirt with him (laughs) while we were smoking (laughs) and that he rejected my advances. To make it worse, he picked her up that morning from her job and fed her more lies about that night. She ended up cussing me out. And to be honest, I started cussing her out too. I told her that she was an idiot for believing any of that. That's not cussing out. But it's like (laughs) she wouldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. Our friendship ended that day and we did not speak from May 2021 to today, March 2022. She called me from a new number. I blocked her and basically said that she was sorry for believing those things, that he cheated. And then now she realized how much of a liar he is. She said it didn't excuse what she did. But she believed him because she loved him and thought he was the one. She was crying during the call and I could feel her emotions. Mm -hmm. I'm so conflicted. This is my ex-best friend of 12 years, the person that I practically grew up with. Normally, I'd never take someone back, but there's been a lot of history between us and I feel so conflicted. I still love her to this day. Should I try to salvage this friendship and give her another chance? Yeah. What the fuck? You're 21, 22. She's your best friend since you were, what, in seventh, sixth grade? There is a key detail here, though. Go. So she adds an edit, and she said, I suspect she caused issues in my other friendships, though. We shared friends in common, and when all of this happened, they distanced themselves from me, and our friendships turned into acquaintances. This all happened after we stopped being friends, and I never told any of them what had happened and never asked out of shame. This is a big reason why I'm struggling to make this decision because she had them all ice me out. You don't have to be best friends with her again. No. You know what I mean? Like you can be on good terms, but like, I'm sorry. When you're in your early twenties and you're caught up, we all lose contact with our fucking friends. We all go ghost. We all become obsessed with this idea of like being young and getting married and having to hold on. And like that, that like, like, it's like a fever. Like you feel like you're in a fever dream with somebody. We all do that shit. And I'm, there's something that I wish I could tell younger me is you're really going to let a, get, a dude get in between you and a friend, even if she wasn't, even if she wasn't the perfect best friend, nobody fucking is. You guys don't have to be best friends again. No. But this girl basically gave up her whole life to make something work and it blew up in her fucking face. Yeah. She's reaching out to you because... She, Meet her in the middle. She's telling you she knows she was wrong. Mm-hmm. But you can't blame somebody for being young and obsessed with somebody. And second of all, she seems like she has a hard time making friends or or like v- she's very possessive. You know what I mean? Especially with like the best friend situation and like icing out other people. She seems very possessive. She's having a hard time. You know her better than anybody. You you can be there for her. Doesn't mean you, got, you guys got to get like matching tattoos. Yeah. But- 12 years is a lot to throw away. And you're so young. 22, yeah. Listen, what I'm, I I sincerely mean that you don't have to be best friends, but to block more love in your life is crazy to me. There are some people obviously who are very toxic. Yeah. You know what I mean? And dudes do this. I'm sorry. Like if this young kids, young boys, boys do this a lot. And I feel like there's nothing more dangerous than a rejected man. If she would have said, yeah, me too, he would have never snitched on her. It was a, it was damage control. Yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean? He turned around and said, your friend hit on me. I've been in that situation too. We all learn our lesson. Your friend will probably not get fucked over like that ever again if she learned her lesson. Mm-hmm. But you're what, seniors in college or just graduated college? Yeah. Relax. And also to like have the sit down conversation. This is a dude that she's with. I'm sure she's in love with him, whatever. But the conversation is only as serious as you make it. My friends, I'm sorry, would have called me and be like, yo, your dude's a whore. So meet me. <laughs> Let's go out. Let's go out tomorrow. I'll tell yeah. you all about it. It's, he's trash, dude. Like, relax. He's trash. Am I wrong? Do you guys would have called me and been like, okay, uh, I just spoke to Bob. It's always Bob. Mm-hmm. Just spoke to Bob. He hit on me. He's a piece of shit. I'm sure he's calling you right now. I'll see you tomorrow. It's done. It's cut. You deserve better. This man's a psychopath. That's what I don't get. Like, I'm like, I've had trash men that try to like flip this script. Like, 
I dated a serial cheater. Like the shit he would spin. He ended up getting a girl pregnant while he was with me. Uh, it was it was had a baby on you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was nuts, nuts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so like I just think it's crazy that like you've been friends with her for twelve years and you believe this guy that you've known for a couple months. It's just, it's sad. It's overall sad. Also to like try to cheat on me and you get rejected. That's embarrassing for you. That's why he did it. His ego was hurt. Exactly. How embarrassing. So, so You go out for a smoke. Okay, pony boy. Get the fuck over yourself. There's an update. Oh, (laughs) hit me. So I'll spark notes it for you. So she ended up apologizing, like reached back out. They met up at a cafe and like had a long heart to heart conversation Um, this, she goes, she told me that she had suspicions when her ex wasn't who he said he was months prior to their breakup. She also said that she suspected he may have lied about me, but she wasn't sure. I asked her why she didn't say anything or reach out to me sooner if she had doubts. And she said that once again, she wasn't sure because she didn't know what to believe. I guess they were like in the middle of a breakup, like fight. And, um, she goes, I asked her why she's sure now that he was lying. And apparently it's because he threw it in her face during the breakup. Apparently they had a big argument and he told her, quote, you're so fucking stupid. You let me convince you that your best friend was coming on to me. This guy's a little bit of an evil genius. Mm -hmm. That is fucking low. You're so fucking stupid. You let me isolate you. He's a sociopath. He's a sociopath. You're so fucking dumb. Like, imagine I looked like I was, I was on this podcast. I would never do this, by the way. Obviously, I'm talking about evil. And I'm like, I don't know. That, was a good ep- that wasn't a good episode. I wouldn't air it. And then later on, I look at me like, you're so dumb that you let me, do you let me convince you? You pick those fucking terrible stories? You pick, yeah, you're so dumb. You let me convince dumb. you that something that is beloved is bad. Like your podcast. Imagine you look at me, you're like, nee, 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 nee. he's fucking with her reality. He's, he's fucking with her sense of reality. He is tilting her radar so off. He, I'm, it's a, I, I feel bad because sometimes I tell people to stay soft. You know what I mean? Like, no, I say it all the time. Like, don't let people change the way you love that. Love yeah. people. You know what I mean? Just like, just because you're a bad friend to me doesn't change the way I'm going to be a friend to people. Right. Yeah. For example. But there's also a part of me where like my most toxic trait is that I'm naive because I can't picture, I can't see a reason why anybody would want to hurt me. Yeah. You know what I mean? You believe in the best in people. I, I rather believe the best. I rather see the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. than believe that people are not innately good. But but it but I'm 31, right? So I'm in a position where if you fuck me over, that's on you. Yeah. At 21, you're way too like soft for that. You're ma- you're still you're malleable. malleable. Yeah. You're so malleable. You got to protect yourself a little bit. I know. So she goes on to say, like they ended up talking a little bit more. She essentially did admit that she went to all the other friends and told them, and that's why they iced her out. Yo. She admitted it. So. OP told her, you know what? She was mad. She was mad. I appreciate your apology. You need to go and tell them all because that's not right if you don't correct your error. I forgive you, but at this point in time, I'm not ready to be your friend again. Doesn't mean I'll change my mind, but I'm not ready. I would also say like, you were so confident I wanted to fuck your man. I already know he's ugly. Please. You You were doing charity work as it was, sweetie. Baby. Come on. Baby. Come on. Nobody wants to fuck your man. You know what I mean? That was a little narcissistic of her. He was yours. Yeah. He was all your... I've said that to people. I'm like, I'm not trying to offend you, but we, you and I got different types. Like, that's not even my friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm no one... I think I, I have to say that a lot to girls too, like the paranoia that people have about like, oh, but um, like if I can't leave my man alone with my friends, like I'm not going to do it. That I'm not gonna do it. I do. I do episodes like with my boyfriend and my best friend mm-hmm. Lauren. Alejandra hasn't done it yet, and Lauren will just be like, "Ha ha!" And she'll kind of like give him like a little shoulder tap, and people go nuts. People go nuts in the YouTube comments. They're like, "Is it just me, or is Lauren flirting with Justin?" Is no, it's Lauren, called friendship. Is Lauren getting a little too comfortable with Justin? And I'm like, "That's fucking weird." I'm like, literally. They're I could projecting sleep, though, you I know that. I could sleep in the same bed with them. Like we've literally laid in bed together and all watched <laughs> movies. Like five little monkeys. Yeah, like I'm like, you guys are like, it's projection. No. I'm just like, if I didn't trust him, I wouldn't be with him. And if you are in this spot with your relationship where you can't trust your boyfriend or your significant other around other people, and especially your best friends, what are you doing? I'm going to say I love, and I've been burned bad. Same. Like to a crisp. 
Oh, I've been okay. fried. Like the little frogs on the sidewalk. <laughs> exactly. Poor, poor motherfucker. <laughs> they didn't even see it coming. Up. They're so fucked up. <sighs> but, and I still, when my, when, like when I'm dating somebody and someone's like, I'm going to go hang out with your friends. I'm like, that's so sick. Cause you want people to be, you want your pod to be your pod. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm not paranoid about it at all. And when I see people that are paranoid, I'm like, I look at them and I'm like, is this a mirror for you right now? Are you not to be trusted? And the reason mm -hmm. I rather trust my friends is because I've invested years, years. You know, yeah. I'm keeping my friends. If if my I know for a fact for the friend and I have a close knit, I, I I call them, I don't call them best friends. I call them non-negotiables. They're family. Yeah. And I have to, about 12, mm -hmm. 12 of them that I'm not, they are non-negotiable to me. And I know for a fact that they would never fuck me over. They'd rather cut off their own tongue and pull out their fingernails mm -hmm. than fuck me over no matter what. And it took like over a decade to find these people. It takes a lot to cultivate those takes kind of friendships. It takes a lot. And if, if the person that I'm with makes a move on them, I'm happy to cut you off because they are non-negotiable. Yep. Those girls that ice them out, they're not your non-negotiables because I would have gone, yo, Shannon, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Did you try to fuck Michaela's man? <laughs> no? All right, I believe you. Done. Uh, Shannon would never do that. Period. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's a there's a lack of like loyalty on this side, but yep. I understand too because this man is fucking with her perception of what's real and what's not. Well, clearly he's a sociopath. So I'm sure there's a lot of gaslighting and like- He should be in sales. Young love, yeah. I'm just saying. Go door to, send him door to door, selling his bullshit. Mm -hmm. I think the line, and it kind of speaks to your non-negotiables. She says, we both ended up crying. And honestly, this felt worse than any breakup I've ever had. And I think that's like the saddest part about all this is like losing friends is- It's the worst breakup in the world. It's terrible. The worst. Like I went through the most psychotic situation where I had to cut one of my best friends off. Like- I flew to Dallas to visit her, took another friend with me, and I was living in Minnesota finishing up school. And she wanted to become friends with my friend that I brought with so bad. We went out. I had a bad Molly trip. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'm, send I'm, sending, happens. I'm sending myself home. And to keep my friend from texting me, she took her phone and hid her phone in a man's suit pocket at the party they were at. So she couldn't find her phone. So she couldn't check on you. So she couldn't check on me. Because she wanted to separate her from me so bad She's so she could be become friends with her. She's jealous. She was a crazy social climber. And my friend, her dad worked for like a NHL organization. And she just wanted, she wanted to marry some hockey dick. So she thought that was her in. And like, I'm like, Lydia, I'm tripping balls. She was a bitch. I like, mm -hmm. I tried to get into her apartment, like had the key. And she was like, the gate was broken. She's like, why the fuck are you calling me? I'm like, we're done. I tried next the next day they stayed out partying at his house the whole next day and I was like, "Hey, you don't have Wi-Fi?" Oh, what? I I have nothing to do here. Can I take your car across the street to Walmart and go buy myself a fucking book? No, you can't take my car. And I'm like, "Is it?" There um, are four. You is know, it? Have you seen um that movie um about the four primal feelings in and out out inside out inside yeah. out so those primal feelings what are they joy fear sadness and anger mm -hmm. those are like your four your four primary colors i know there's three but there's four and if you don't address one of them they manifest into other shit yeah being a control freak you know or jealous jealous is fear and anger yeah. right um uh rage rage is not being mad rage is like sadness anger it's like all of them all these things can manifest into something else yeah and it makes me sad when I go through friend breakups if I'm not at fault because of course I'm not a perfect person I fucked up too yeah definitely. sometimes I look at people and I'm like I know I'm a good friend and you're having such a hard time facing yourself in the way that you feel that you that now you get to miss out on a friend like me yeah. And it, I'm a good fucking friend. It was no loss to me. I literally had the literally. best time the rest of my trip. Got my own hotel, pet some fucking giraffes. It was a good time. Like, why would you dig yourself into a hole where life would be easier without you when you know that I love you? I know. You know what I mean? Especially for friends. A friend breakup. It sucks. What's fucked up to me, though, is what we were saying about the, the girl in the beginning who was biracial and wasn't mm -hmm. invited to dinner. What communication, this girl was looking at herself in the mirror and she's like, I did everything right. I got, I, I had one drink because I had to wake up early. I was responsible. I called the Uber. This guy hit on me. I did not respond. I ignored his advances. He I tried repeated to it. tell her. I even. tried to tell her what is wrong with me. And then as women, we look at ourselves in the mirror. We think I'm not doing good enough. 
So now this girl in this relationship, they're both walking walking on eggshells because one, one person is living in a space of like, I don't want to make her mad again, fear. And the other one is living in people pleasing. Mm -hmm. It's not, they, they should be friendly, but they need like years apart. Yeah, I would agree. I think a few years. See them, see each other when you're 25, 26. And it happens like that, babes. <laughs> so, I, uh, please. They'll come back together. Mm -hmm. I know. And like, they've been friends 12 years. It's fucked up. They didn't talk for over a year, a year, which is really fucking crazy to me. But I didn't talk to one of my best friends for 10 months. I call it the winter of our friendship because it's a season and yeah. you see each other and you're like, yo, I love you. But, um, it's important to like, it's about lessons, right? If you ever do this to me ever again, mm -hmm. basically I was going through a breakup and she's like, I don't want to be around sad people. And she hadn't, she hadn't been through a breakup yet. I understand we're past that now. You yeah. know what I mean? But there's a point now where it's like, I would never do it to you. No. So you need, I, I need to know if I have to meet you here. Cause I won't, you got to meet me here. I'm well, not saying I'm up here, but mm -hmm. you got to meet me here. Yeah. And I think like you said, it's like, you don't have to be best friends, like determine how much you want to invest in this friendship and hold her at arm's length going forward. Maybe if that's, but like, I'm kind of in the boat. Sometimes people do need to be cut out. Yeah. And that's on that. But I think life is also too short and you've been friends forever. forever. And I'm going to say, people talk about it like, oh, he's, she's dating such a manipulator. She's dating, um, he's such a scammer, con artist, liar, whatever. Nobody falls for a manipulator that's not charming, can work a room, you know, um, great conversationalist. Um, what's it called when you have a charismatic, yeah. confident, of course she is. Because if somebody manipulative like that and smart like that chooses you, what does that make you? You must be smart and funny too. Mm -hmm. So like, you can't be that mad at her. No. She's, she's a little freaking girl. She's a young She's baby. a little girl. She's a young baby. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. They'll, we all do. We all do. Go to therapy. Go to a sound deprivation bath. Oh, I want to try that so bad. So do I, but my friend pooped herself in it because the salt, <laughs> because the salt, the salt speeds up your digestive system. So she she shit herself in okay. the tank, and she was like banging on the door to be let out. They wouldn't open the door. <laughs> Just floating with her own poop in there. And then she picked it up and she tried to push it down the drain with her toes. And she was, waffle stomped it. She's naked. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try shrooms and Joshua tree first. Please do that. Do that first. Let's go seems, step by step. But if you see yourself safer. in the sound deprivation bath, you got to call me. Okay. okay. It'll be my first so, one. There you go. I'll uh, come get you. I'll come get you. <laughs> help, mom. Can you come pick me up? She's shit in there. <laughs> I wonder if that costs extra to do that. I think she ran out, to be honest. <laughs> she was naked. She ran out. I would it. try to scoop that out with a shirt or something, like strain <laughs> it out of there. No one would know. They, I would not leave any evidence behind. <laughs> would, My friend shit himself at the beach and he tried to like pick it up with the towel and let it go. Like, you no, know, bury it in the like, sand like you, a cat. You know, like uh, people in like the North Pacific, or, not the North Pacific, in like really cold spaces like Antarctica and stuff. Like they put an elder person on the ice chip and like push it away. Yeah. He said he like did that with his poop and he turned around. Um, what if he's a seaweed? <laughs> yeah, and he said something like that. And he said that when he was turning around, <gasps> no. he, he heard somebody scream, I think it's human. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, <laughs> so he pooped in the water outside i think so i think he carried like it in there <laughs> <laughs> like a beloved Goodbye. why wouldn't your first thought just be the beach is a litter box well, you know poop panic makes you crazy <laughs> poop panic makes you freaking crazy it does you it, know it does mm -hmm. oh my god <sighs> that's great mm -hmm. but <sighs> anyway yeah mazel to them I wish I had a poop story now. I'm like notorious. I have so many. I'm notorious for putting so poop poops. stories on this podcast. People have literally left me reviews on Apple Podcasts being like, Morgan, enough is enough. No more poop stories. I, like I, 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 I love have so them. many poop stories. I love them. It's Dude, just like my bread and butter. There's no, we'll talk about it. Well, I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you pooped yourself? Absolutely. <laughs> When? How? Why? One time I was 21 and I had a panic attack and I shit myself in the car. 
Yeah, that I would, made that my brother come out, and he and I was like, anything but the Little Mermaid towel, towel or the Lion King towel. And he goes, why? And he goes, fuck, dude. Like, it's like, dude. and then, um, and then another time, I was I was a styling assistant for like a really long time, for like five years or something. It was like my first grown up job. You know what okay, I mean? Okay. We're like, I'm paying taxes. Look yeah. at me, you know? Um, and th- we were, I, I grew up in Coral Gables and there's like all these like super old houses that are just beautiful. And one was like, I'm not exaggerating, three houses down from my house, three oh houses gosh, down. Okay. And it was something for the Food Network. And no, it was a Pine Saw. It was a Pine Saw commercial. Oh, okay. Oh, I, Perfect I'm, set I'm to there. poop on. And I am I got a stomach ache and this was one of the first times that my boss let left me alone on set that she's like Teffy's got it and I said thank you so much Teffy don't got it <laughs> my stomach was so bad I remember I was like it was so bad my mom was like why wouldn't you just go home I was home and I was like it was that bad that you I couldn't. ran to the talents trailer which is probably like the size of this room uh-huh. and I went to the bathroom and I just absolutely lost it oh and I remember I was like going to flush and it was nothing. And I was like, the toilet wasn't activated. I was like, hello. Like, and then I hear knocks on the door saying, Hey, and I'm like, he's like, Hey, I need to use the restroom. And it's one of the like uh, Actors, producers, yeah. oh, one okay. of the producers that I worked with all the time. And to be completely honest with you, I had a huge crush on, he had a wife, he had children, but, but still, you still want him to think you're cool. Work crush. I was 20. Yeah, exactly. We get it. That was my work husband. Well, ex-husband. Anyway, so I try to clean it up as best I can. And I take paper towels and I'm trying to put it down the sink and the sink gets clogged. And I just, there's, I'm just living in a world of shit emotionally and physically. And so then I have to open and he's like, hey, are you okay? Like, are you okay? And I'm like, and I open. I'm on my period. I need a minute. And I open the door and I look at him and I'm like, this is so crazy. (laughs) Somebody, somebody. You blamed on someone else. Someone must have come in here. <laughs> and just shit. Oh. And shit everywhere. And he goes, somebody. I'm like, somebody. <laughs> it wasn't me, I promise. I remember being like, oh, who went to this? Criminal. Like this. He's like, <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get someone to clean this up. And I'm like, yeah, and then I look at him like, let's find this guy. Oh. Oh I didn't sleep for fucking days. Oh. I was like spinning, spinning. Like when Rue's at her worst, oh. that was me thinking about poop. I'm oh like, my god. How <laughs> did you go back to work after this? It was a three-day shoot. Oh. I didn't look at anybody in the eyes. Did they not have water hooked up to the trailer yet? They hadn't turned on the water. Yeah. Who the fuck doesn't turn on the fucking water? It sounds like a Coachella bathroom nightmare. Like, have you been in those Coachella bathroom trailers? You know, it's my first time at Coachella. Baby's first Coachella. You'll probably have an artist pass or VIP, though. You'll be a a different experience than the rest of us peasants. This fine. This story, my best friends, they get some angry. They're like, how could you do that? I'm like, you don't understand. (laughs) It was so bad. I had alcohol poops. But didn't, okay, so like, was it the type of trailer though, when you, you stick your foot on it, like the hole mm-hmm, opened mm-hmm. and it didn't go down, Nothing. it just sat there. Mm-hmm. Like God. an airplane. Oh, I'm there. I can see myself. I'm bringing you back. I'm bringing, I'm, I'm growing out my bangs. I see it. Oh my God. That was, was terrible. That's the best. Someone must have, who would do this? <laughs> that's the best story I've ever heard. How do you get the poop off your hands? Like, I knew you, you like... You must have stunk the rest of the I, day. What? I ran home uh, to my house <laughs> and my mom was like, what the, why are you crying? <laughs> I was like, Felipe doesn't love me anymore. I know. Oh yeah, it was great. God. It was great. It was great. Mm-hmm. It was a good time. I love this. Okay. Anyway. Well, let's mm-hmm. experience someone else's trauma instead of yours. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Am I the asshole for making my wife think our son went missing? <laughs> okay. Probably, mm-hmm, probably. 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 My wife has a horrible habit that is that I discovered two months ago. We were ordering lunch on the Subway app, and I told her to pick the location that has a drive through That way, we don't have to go inside and take the baby out of the car just to clip him back in a few minutes later. She told me it's not a big deal to leave the baby in the car to run in and pick it up really fast. I had no idea she ever did this. 
I told her I was not comfortable with her leaving him in the car alone. Yeah. Even for a minute. Right. And she told me she's been doing it since he was born and it's always been fine. She told me she does it to pick up food, run into the post office or the pharmacy, etc. Mm. I was floored. We don't live in a horrible area, but it's also not super safe either. I told her not to ever do this again. She told me she never stopped to think about the potential dangers and that she would stop doing it. Well, yesterday, as I was driving home from my brother's house, I spotted her car at the gas station near our place. It was parked in a spot up front and not at a pump. So I figured she stopped in to grab some snacks, which we like to do. I decided to stop and go in and say hi and get some food. And I pulled in and parked next to her. However, when I got there, I was furious to find our son in the car seat. The car wasn't even locked. I don't know. I don't know what came over me. But in that moment, I decided to take my son and put him into my car. He's got a car seat in there, too. I then drove to the other side of the gas station parking lot and waited for my wife to come out. It took six minutes for her to appear. When she saw that he was gone, she looked stunned for a second and then started to frantically look around and cry. I didn't let it go on long after I saw her pull out her phone, presumably to call 911. And that's when I pulled my car around to her. I parked, got out, and walked around to my son's door, opened it to show her that he was in there. She looked extremely relieved, but that quickly turned to anger with her asking me why I took him and did that to her. I told her she needed to learn her lesson and she promised to (laughs) stop leaving him in the car Mm -hmm. and that she was extremely irresponsible. It was so easy for me to pull up and take him. No one else at the gas station even noticed. So if he was really taken, there would have been no help and it would have been 100% her fault. She proceeded to call me cruel and psychotic and tried taking our son out of my car into hers. I said no and that... I would be driving him home, and I left. She came home not much later, but ignored me the rest of the day. She acknowledged me today, saying she wanted an apology, and I said, absolutely not. Okay. And she's the one who should be saying sorry. All right. She's been guilt-tripping me the rest of the day, saying no mother should experience the fear I put in her. Did I go too far? Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to say this. I don't know who the fuck you think you are. You're not her parent. You are not here to teach her a lesson. And I never hate ultim. I never love ultimatums. But in that case, if you feel that strongly, you say, "If you do this one more time, I'm I'm leaving you, and I'm getting custody." There's no way. There's no way. I rather an ultimatum than you try to teach me a lesson. The things I run through a parent's mind. I can't. If I don't find my cat for 15 minutes, (laughs) I'm like, I put her in the dryer. Oh, She's God. dead. You know what I mean? Like the things that run through your yeah, mind, especially a yeah. little kid. It. I understand. Look, I am. I'm the oldest of three. So if I was in the car, it was three of us, and no one was going to kidnap us. We were terrible. Like you would think that you left like the um, gremlins in there from yeah. the movie. Like after they give them water, like that was us. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, we were horrible. You know. Um. Like I thought the car seats in a in a in a car were for graffiti. It was terrible. It was terrible. Um. But lit- literally, I'm think I'm. If I was a wife and I was like, look, I don't have any help. It sounds like she doesn't have help. She's with the kid all day, mm-hmm. and she doesn't want. And maybe the kid is calm in the car. And she's want to take the kid inside. And if yeah. this is recent, I understand COVID, pandemic worries and stuff like that, in and out, fine, whatever. She must have her reasons. I don't, I'm not saying that. I, the last thing I think is that she's a bad mom. Mm-hmm. That's something you do to someone who is cruel. It is a little vengeful. V- a little? Well, a, a little. So the overall vote on this. Is that he's not the asshole. Yeah. Yo, get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, overall vote, not the asshole. They... Top comment, and there is an update, so we do find out a little more, but the top comment goes, normally I'm fully against game playing, but this is your child's life. I support your actions. Your wife is being hugely neglectful, not to mention it'll be warm soon and being left in a hot car even for a few minutes can be deadly. Not the asshole. And I wouldn't let her take him anywhere until she apologizes. Absolutely fucking not. Dude, get the fuck real. These are people that are mad at her because of the idea of a mother. Like this person has to live for this person that they birthed. They're like the devoted mother, the Virgin Mary, the one crying over Jesus on the cross. Like this whole thing of like devotion and all stuff. This part is she's a person. People are so people fucking ridiculous. Mistakes, if this was sure. a dad, they'd be like, he's a busy guy. 
People do make more excuses for men. I'm so fucking lutely. I'm gonna go. I'm. I gotta disagree though. I do think the way he executed was a little, a little unhinged. A, a li- I, I, You know what? If you want to teach her a lesson, fine. A little unhinged. My mind would have been like, my kid's in a sex trafficking ring. Immediately. I, I would have. I would have taken the baby out of the car seat and met her in the store, and I've been like, you know how easy it was for me to just get him out of the car. Exactly. You, that's what know, I mean. Do yes. you know how easy it was for me to walk up to your car and take our baby? Do you know how many people there was an adoption scheme where this woman stole like five thousand babies from hospitals? Just yeah, walk yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. take them, and put them up for adoption. A couple famous celebrities actually got their kids through her. Like, there's crazy schemes yeah, out there. I mean, so we I wouldn't. Those nurses all the time. In I New wouldn't York. have given her the jump scare. I would have taken the baby out and just met her in the store and been like, "Hey, bitch." What you doing? I know. So part of me is like, I'd I'd rather tell my wife, I'd rather him have the tantrum. Yeah. It's worth it for him to have the tantrum than to be taken. You didn't even lock the fucking car. Yeah. Like this isn't a purse. You know what I mean? This isn't It's not even a dog. Like you can leave a a dog in the car and crack the window with AC on. No, my grandfather would have called the cops on you. People do that now. My grandfather would walk around with a wrench to break the windows down if they saw an animal. But Uh that's what I'm saying. Like- but another part of me, the other side of me is like, who am I? I've never been a stay at home mom. So I don't know. And I'm thinking it sounds a little postpartum me than me. Postpartum depression is a big problem that I'm passionate about. So, so she could be really struggling. Maybe her only breaks from the kid is when she's in the post office. Like those six minutes is all she has. Mm-hmm. But there's a point where I'm like, OK, so how do I meet? How do I meet you in the middle? Like, you got to be honest with me. And I won't I'm not going to think you hate our kid. and You want our kid to be kidnapped. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you're leaving a carrot under a box for a rabbit. You know, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. But you can't do this. And if you're feeling this way, how can we meet in the middle? Yeah. And it might be, dad, maybe you work less. Like, m- maybe we get into d- daycare. We got to ask our moms, our families or something like that. Yeah. But the, it, there's respite care for people. Like, if you need an hour yeah. a day, like you need three hours a day to go run your errands there's and enjoy There's night nurses. Yourself. Yeah. You know? There's shit you can do. And like, I know affordability is tough, but- partner with another mom where the other mom comes over with her baby. She watches your baby and then you return the favor. Like there's ways to do this. So if that's what you need, you just got to fucking communicate that to your partner. Yeah. I, I'm talking as someone who does not have children. I'm far, far from it. The moments, the mo- <laughs> far. Justin, you heard? <laughs> but I feel like when the first sentence, we don't live in a, in a bad part of town. If you want yeah, true matter. crime, the first sentence, it was a sleepy, quiet town. Always. Always. The most horrendous things. Yep. Like my aunt lives in New Canaan, Connecticut. I swear, I think I'm the only brunette there. It's like the literal most tamest, boring place. And the most horrendous things happen. Actually, the family that lived in that house before my family hid Angela Davis in the basement, which is crazy. It was very rock and roll. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Wow. But anyway, yeah. So I, I understand. I can understand how someone's like, dude, it's just five minutes. I'm doing my best. I'm with the kid all fucking day. I'm sorry. I forgot to lock the car. But the other side of it is, it is like, is that what you're going to tell the cops? Yeah. When they're trying to look for our kid? Yeah. Parenting is hard. Parenting is a hard, hard place for me. Like when people ask me like, oh, Tuffy, I'm trying to, like my teenager's driving me nuts. What I do? I'm like, everything I say comes from zero experience. I have never been a parent. I've only been a kid. And I cannot tell I cannot tell a parent how to parent if I've only been the kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's unfair. But I think mm-hmm. if we're talking about the kid's point of view, he'd much rather go into the store than be stolen. Oh. <laughs> You'd fucking think. So yeah. OP gives an update on the situation. Mm-hmm. I sat my wife down this morning and did apologize for the way I went about things. But I said I was not sorry for caring about our son's safety. And in the moment, felt like she needed a huge wake-up call. She apologized for lying and continuing to do this unsafe practice. I asked her why she seems so casual about what she is doing. Most parents I know, myself included, are on the paranoid side when it comes to their kids. And she has been doing this for so long without seeing an issue. I asked if she thinks she's dealing with some kind of postpartum postpartum mental health issue as I don't consider this normal. She broke down crying, saying she doesn't know what's wrong with her. I knew it. Poor she, baby. She has agreed to seek counseling, and until there's a major change slash improvement, I will be running all errands with my son, or we will be doing them together. But I told her I, I cannot trust her anymore to take him places by herself. Oh, until she gets her mind right. Mm-hmm. That's a little mean. I look at people when we talk about postpartum depression, it's like, of course, those home hormones are crazy. Oh my God. My mm-hmm. sister-in-law went through hell with it. And like, she's very open about it. She's been on and talked about it, but 
she remembers an experience she had where the baby just would not stop crying, Mm -hmm. would not stop crying. Mm -hmm. She was about to go fucking crazy. And she remembers this intrusive thought. And this was like her wake up call, like, Mm -hmm. holy fucking shit. Like this is too much. Yeah. But it was a thought like, what would happen if I put hot sauce in my baby's eyes? Oh, that's too much. Yeah. And she was like, holy fucking shit. I need professional help. And she's a PA. She's a medical provider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so it's like, it can affect anyone and everyone. Yeah. And it fucking, when it hits. It does not, yeah. It it does not discriminate. No. My mom, my mom and my family are crazy though. I feel like I'm the only sensitive one in that, in that bitch. Like everybody, (laughs) everybody is like, my mom is so rock and roll. She showed up early. I tell my, I tell my manager this all the time because they have the same birthday and they're the same person. (laughs) I, my mom was like, oh yeah. Um, maternity, maternity leave, like this person in my office, um, she's having a baby. So exciting, but she's going to, she wants like two months, uh, maternity leave. Isn't that crazy? And I said, what do you mean? She's like, I showed up after three weeks. I was bored. <laughs> I know. Oh I like, my God. My mom loves, loves to work. She was like born to work. Yeah. But I was like, you don't want to spend more time with me. She's like, you're a baby. You can't talk. You're, you're with your grandma. You're boring. You're boring. I can only do so much. She was like, please let I, me come back when you're like, one and talking. And my grandma didn't experience what I asked her about. It. I was like, were you ever sad to have a kid? She's like, no, I'm, and my mom neither. So, but they believe, yeah. obviously they believe it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they, they're not like, this is made up or whatever. Women being dramatic. Of course not. They're like, the hormones are crazy. Yeah. The th- I think my grandma had like a thyroid issue after like insane. But I remember when Brooke Shields talked about postpartum depression and Tom Cruise said it was made up. My mom like had a hard time understanding it because she had three kids and like never experienced it. And so like when my sister-in-law was going through it, she was like, I, I get it's a thing, but like, I can't wrap my head around it because I didn't experience it. And I think that's the problem with a lot of issues in the world. It's like, that's what I tell, that's what I tell people from generations older than us too. Just because you don't see it or just because you didn't feel it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and also I'm, my mom and my grandma, I, they had babies. The last, my mom's last baby was 26 years ago. Quite so she can speak about things in a different perspective. Yeah. But also me thinks that maybe in 1959, people weren't talking about it in Medellin, Colombia. I would, uh, you know? I would think that's true. Yeah. So the, it's about, it's, it's like, um, when people talk about losing, losing babies now, like miscarriages, it is so fucking common. And I grew up thinking it was one in a million. Yeah. And just now it's so common, it's so fucking common. Ugh. And people act like, oh my God, my body was designed to do this. You're still growing a human being. Sometimes things go awry. It blows my it's mind. It's very sad. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. Girl power. Crazy. Well, I'm happy for this couple. It seems like things will get sorted. Mental health help is very important. I wish you'd loosen up a little bit. Come on, Bob. (laughs) (laughs) Find her a babysitter. Like she needs to get out of the house too. That's what I was thinking. I want to say that, but socioeconomic, you know, issues. I want to be like, get a sitter. My mom didn't get a sitter. It was my grandma. Mm -hmm. Livia, very rock and roll. Yeah, no, I went, I grew up with my grandma. She, she had it rough. You know, it takes a village. It really does. It It takes a village. Okay, one last Am I the Asshole story, mm-hmm. and then I'll give you some celebrity fights. Okay, let's do it. Am I the Asshole for making a joke about my brother's affair at his wedding? When I was in elementary school, I was the type of kid who got disrupts class often on their report card, so I never focused much on school. My district had this system where they would pair high schoolers with younger kids to help them in school, and my mom made me do that after I kept getting in trouble. So my tutor was a freshman, Abby. She would come to our house after school and help me with my homework or something. My brother, John, was the same age as Abby, so they would talk to each other and ended up dating. She stopped tutoring me officially after like a month, but since she was still at our house a lot, I also talked to Abby and we grew very close. Fast forward 10 years. Abby and John married and had a kid together. Five years later, John tells me that he's getting a divorce because he's met someone new. It sucked because I like John and Abby together a lot, but whatever. Then he tells me he had an affair with his new girlfriend. Also Um. sucks, and I told him he shouldn't have hurt Abby like that, but whatever. I also asked Abby how she was doing, and she wasn't doing well. But she told me that she didn't want her to be the reason I had a bad relationship with my brother. However, two months before the wedding, Abby calls me and tells me that my brother's girlfriend has been harassing her nonstop. She showed me the text and his girlfriend was saying some pretty disturbing things about how she's so much better than Abby, taunting Abby for having to share custody of her kid now, etc. 
just making fun of her and bullying her. We got a tough guy. Okay. I told my brother about this and he said he would, quote, ask his girlfriend about it. A month later, I asked him if he ever brought it up and he said he did, but saw nothing wrong with the text, which pissed me off. I confirmed that he saw the same text I saw. Abby apologized for involving me in the whole thing in the first place and encouraged me to still go to the wedding where my brother asked me to make a speech. The speech went well until he made a joke. The gist of the joke was me turning to his new wife and telling her that if she's learned anything from this, she should know that my brother, quote, will never let his wife stop him from finding the love of his life. This got my brother and wife really That's mad at me. That's fucking funny. That's fucking funny. That's <laughs> fucking funny. Okay. And they That's kicked- a good joke. I love this. This is a good joke. This is karma. Instant karma. Mm-hmm. This got my brother and his wife really mad, and they kicked me out shortly after. And my brother has been calling slash texting me nonstop yelling at me. You know why they kicked you out, babe? Because you're, you're right. right. Like, seriously. Uh, if they were kicking you out, I'd be like, okay. Okay, there's two sides, right? Mm-hmm. There's two sides. One, you never embarrass the family. No. Never. You never not do that. Not at the wedding. Not at the wedding, not in front of people, and especially on camera. But you want to humiliate him behind closed doors? Go buck. Go bananas. You say this at a at a small little get-together? You say it at, fa- at family Sunday dinner. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's okay. That's fine. But a speech? A speech in the wedding, whatever. Second, <sighs> it reminds me of Prince Harry and Prince William. Oh. Because Prince William cheated on Kate with her best friend Rose. Oh, that and Prince Harry, I'm in the, I'm, I'm on the international blogs. Okay. I watched the series you did and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a big Meghan Markle fan. Man. I know you like the Royal family. You no, like- I, no, no, no. I'm, I love Meghan Markle too. It's just, I, I know somebody that knows her ex-husband and sometimes they're like, oh, she's so mean. I'm like, but you're talking to the ex. Yeah. You got to consider the source. Got to get both sides. Apparently she was a big social climber or whatever. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. But I'm like, of course, if I was her ex and I was bit, doesn't matter. You get everybody, it. everybody, yeah. Even Princess Diana was not perfect, you know. We even all, was, all and I love her for it, you know. She was a cancer, whatever. Anyway, um, she. I'm thinking like one, you don't embarrass him, but two, Prince Harry has a conflict with his brother yeah. because of what Prince Charles did with Camilla yeah. to Diana, right? So he's like, um, how could you do this to someone you've been with since you were what, like 19, 20? I feel like Harry and Kate were so, so close. So too. close. They like, were. They, they were, were little buddies. Yeah. Every every photo you see, they're like whispering, laughing at each other. Yeah. But like brother and sister, not mm-hmm. like anything weird. And this is also like spectator. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you and I, won't, yeah. we're not in Buckingham no. Palace. I wish. As much as I want it. I measure that I want to be, you know, I want to talk to the queen. I know. I want to be like when Princess Diana threw herself down the stairs, I want to be like, yo, Liz, Liz, what, happened? what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, I feel that we're both crazy horse girls the, but- <laughs> and I like corgis too. So I feel like we'd be like this. I feel like, so a part of me is like, I'm a dolphin girl. But, oh, I yeah. love that for you. I know. Lisa Frank. I was like, oh, <laughs> she's got ponies on her shit too. And she unicorns. Does. She's got ponies on her shit too. Yeah. Do you know my favorite fact about Lisa Frank what? is that she was on the same street as the bank of America headquarters and they changed it from like, I forget the name of the street, like, like, um, old road or whatever okay. to Lisa Frank Avenue I like that. and bank of America stopped getting their mail and they had no idea why. Cause Lisa Frank didn't tell them that they changed the address. <laughs> Bank of America had to like plead with Lisa Frank. You figure that the postman would understand. No, he's like, fuck sorted. these guys. Fuck these guys and the <laughs> maintenance fee. Fuck them. But whatever. Um, I So I, a part of me loves that he's sticking up for mm-hmm. Abby. But there's other ways to do that. I don't think humiliating someone is the way to do it. But if I were him, I would have a drink at the wedding. I'd make the speech saying, I love seeing my brother happy, whatever, whatever. And then at the speech be like, I want you to know that Abby is the mother to my nieces and nephews. And if I catch you, if I catch you sending her one more fucking text, I'm going to make your life a living fucking hell. There's no way you're going to harass somebody. It's a little more PG. That I know and that I love and that you fucked her husband and you have no right to. And I would be like, and you know what? I'm going to tell you something else. You're not as bad as you think you are, babe. Bitch. How you get them is how you lose them. Absolutely. Yeah, please. And that's a, that's the mistress paranoia you got to live with. Mm-hmm. So top comment, you know how vigilantes are technically in the wrong, but we all cheer them on anyway. You're the asshole, but high five. I know. You know what I mean? I yeah. know. Sometimes it's like, 
Sometimes it needs to be done. Like, you're such a dick, but I get it. Justified asshole. But I get it. You should come over for dinner. I love you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love Justified that. Justified asshole. Okay, wrapping it up real quick. Okay. We have a speed round, speed round of celebrity Am I the Asshole edition. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to give you a situation and you just have to say if they're the asshole or not the asshole. Okay. Justin Bieber skateboarding away as Haley Bieber got out of the car and fell. Okay, absolutely the asshole. Selena Gomez dating the weekend. Not the asshole. Lindsay Lohan versus Hillary Duff. They were kids. I want to say, I'm going to say Lindsay Lohan was the asshole though. She was like taunting her. There she, is another um, category called everyone sucks. And no, you can no, just no. say everyone sucks. No, Hillary Duff did not suck. Okay. You're not going to text Chad Michael Murray and tell him, uh, talk shit about Hillary while they're on set together. Yeah. That's like fucking. No. I thought, uh, I thought both of them showing up to each other's premieres on Invited was Hillary is following Lindsay's lead. Hilarious. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go with Lindsay's the asshole, but like. Rock and roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift versus Kanye and Kim. Kim's the asshole. Get your fucking husband off bullying a little girl. I know. He She's a little fucking girl. He stole her mic. That, yeah. that asshole. Eminem versus MGK. Not the asshole. Kind of an everyone, just like yeah, not, not a thing. Okay, Colson, you'll survive. Whatever yeah. his name is. Mm -hmm. Nicki Minaj and Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Not the fucking asshole. <laughs> you heard about Nikki? You it heard was, about her? It was she, a little unhinged. They paid her 50K for a verse. No album out. <laughs> Damn. That's a lot mm -hmm. of money. It's a lot of money. Last but not least, mm -hmm. Chris Rock versus Will Smith. You got you had a first row Everybody seat. sucks. I had a front row seat. Everybody sucks. I would agree with that. I would somebody asked me, I'm gonna be honest, okay? Somebody asked me what I would have preferred. And I would have preferred you scare the shit out of Chris Rock. Behind the, the scenes, mic. behind the Just scenes, behind the scenes. steal the mic. Not even steal the mic. Yell from your seat. Shut the fuck up. You're not alopecia. fucking funny. You're not fucking funny. I would prefer that. Yeah. He should have said something, but get up there, steal the mic and be like, you know what? That wasn't funny. You realize she's got alopecia. Mm -hmm. That was a tasteless joke. Or like my wife bitch. is sick. Shut the fuck up. And then I, I would have screamed, bitch. Like yeah. that. Yeah. I know. Needed to be said, minus the assault. Yeah. Or like forehead finger him later at the after party. Yeah. Do that. Chris Rock isn't going to, you know, he's like a little noodle. That's all I got for you. All right. Thank you so much Italy. for coming on. No, thank you. God, this was a blast. I, I could do this all day. Oh, yeah. I know. Where can people find you? Oh. Plug your socials. You know what I always say. In your dreams. No. So <laughs> at, <laughs> at Hello Tuffy on Instagram, Twitter, Ticker Talker. I love it. In, okay. in, in your dreams. Until next time, guys. <laughs> Until next Bye. time. Bye.